Home Alive is an anti-violence, self-defense organization that was founded in 1993, and we teach self-defense and boundary setting classes. Everybody in the room has done um, self-defense. I want people to leave knowing that they already knew self-defense, that, that they do self-defense every day, and the, way, the reason that we know this, that is that they got here. We need to take self-defense in order to defend ourselves from the stranger in the bushes idea. We hear that all over the place and we retell it to each other and there are emails sent about it to us with lists and lists of rules of things to do and not do to avoid the strangers in our lives. And that's actually based on a very small percentage of the violence that happens. A lot of these are stranger focused and what we know is that most violence that happens to us happens to some people that we know. 85%. So if I'm locked in my door, I'm going to be locked in the person that's hurting me the most in with me, right? I mean, and then, and then what does self-defense look like? Because it's not like as if self-defense isn't happening in those contexts, but that's not what we sort of tend to put up here. After taking the first self-defense class, um, I went home and told my husband about it, and, and I told him, well, there was a guy in the class, and I thought that was really weird. Like, I just anticipated it to be all women. And he said, well, guys get attacked too. You know, it's not just women that are victims. And so that really kind of changed my perception about just defending yourself. It, it's not, you know, specifically to gender. You know, it's anyone. It was a completely open environment, and I think that's important that not only you know, that don't, not only females are protecting themselves, but also males, because we're all, we're all, you know, at times we can all be vulnerable. In 1993, a well-known um, singer in a band called The Gits that was an up-and-coming punk band in Seattle, her name was Mia Zapata. She was raped and murdered on her way home from a club. People um, saw Mia as this streetwise tough woman that people wouldn't mess with and that she could be a victim of violence just like so many other people was very um, very awakening for a lot of people. I think it's a great tool for everyone not just women but everyone should um, you know take these classes because we all you know can you know find ourselves in situations where we need to protect ourselves. You develop a lot of strong boundaries with certain types of people in your life and not with other people and that there could be all kinds of things that kind of come, are brought to bear in that. A lot of times when we think about boundary setting, we think about keeping people out or saying no or what we don't want. Boundary setting also encompasses what you do want. It's, a much, it's, it's as much about um, saying no as it is about saying yes. That, I think, for Home Alive is one of the bigger distinguishing factors in our boundary setting curriculum, is really looking at negotiation. Unusual distance from personal space. Three feet? Three feet. Three feet. <laughs> and you're not know, think it's three feet. No. <laughs> it depends, right? Because if it's your friend, it might be, you know, not your space, right? But again, it's about then that situation. Anyone ever have someone either A, stand too close to you at the supermarket line or at an ATM, right? And you're like, and then like we feel, we feel like we can't say anything, right? So being able even just turn around and just like, space like this is not threatening. It isn't something that you have to study for a long time like a martial art and get really expert in a very specific way of doing things that there are tools that you are already using that you didn't even recognize. There might be things that uh, certain moves or certain techniques that uh, people will be able to that will be more accessible to different people that all of it is really adaptable and that's by its very nature the uh, flexibility of the curriculum. It's not so much, you can't do this because you're not strong enough, you can't do this because you can't move in a certain way, it's more, uh, if that move isn't gonna work, then here's a bunch of other choices that you can make that are gonna be accessible. I've never taken any martial arts classes and you don't need like a background in martial arts or anything to learn the release moves or the throws or things like that. It all, it's all about strategy and um, being aware uh, and um, using leverage and not strength. So even as a shorter woman, it's not about strength and having a background in, in self-defense. We can easily defend ourselves in other ways. Uh, when I thought about self-defense before, I just thought of like physical like grab releases and things like that it's just there's so much more to it and it's kind of comforting to know that you don't necessarily have to actually hurt the person if they attack you not something about being macho or being aggro and it really is about sort of something that's about empowering myself and I really think that that's what it is for me at least it's, it's more about empowering myself and knowing that I can take care of myself and be strong. I 